Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Rock. And now, Pastor Stewart. We're talking about truth this month of July. And when I say we're talking about truth, we have to talk about truth in order to talk about freedom. We know in the month of July, we celebrate the 4th of July because in 1776, July 4th, Declaration of Independence. So in St. John chapter 8, verse 32, which will be the key verse for the month of July, Jesus says to those listeners who thought they were free, he says this, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, this is a verse that has been misquoted, thereby misinterpreted, because if you say truth make you free, and we say that, we make the mistake of saying that truth make you free, when in essence the Bible says you shall know the truth. The word know there is very powerful. So if you just say truth make you free, that's really not the truth, because truth doesn't make you free. It is knowing the truth. So in the month of July, we're going to get into this study, the 31 days of July, talking about freedom, freedom, freedom to the point where our bodies, our souls, emotions, our money, everything connected with us knows that we are free. So Jesus says, you shall know the truth. If you just said truth, make you free, eh, you missed it because that's not the truth. The truth is you have to know it. Now, what does it mean to know the truth? Well, when you think about knowing something in our time, it is to know maybe a person's name. You know, it's, oh, I know Johnny. I know Mary. But that's not what the Bible is talking about here. It's talking about in a, in a different type of way. So we know that when we study the word of God and we look it up in the concordance, we look it up in the dictionary, a Bible dictionary that's talking about what this word really means in the Greek is talking about an intimate knowledge of truth. Now, the example I use is, is when the Bible says in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew language, it says Adam knew Eve and she conceived. Now, the word knew or know there. It's not that he knew Eve's name. It's not that he shook her hand. It's not that he knew of her. He knew her in a very intimate way. So when you think about the word know, which is key to the whole verse. So what what we've done, we have said truth make you free. Well, people have focused on that and they know some truth, but they're still not free because one of the components, one of the major components is missing. Because know here is not just knowing about, knowing of, but it is an intimate relationship. For example, the Bible tells us that in the Gospel of Matthew, that on Judgment Day, there are going to be those that tell the Lord Jesus Christ, we did many wonderful works in your name. We cast out demons, we healed the sick, and so on. The Lord will say unto them, I never knew you. Now think about it. We're talking about the eternal God who is omniscient. He knows everything. So he's not talking about knowing as far as information. He's talking about knowing in an intimate relationship. So just that one word throws the whole verse off. That's why in the month of July, I want you to tune in because if we know the truth, the Bible says it's make you free, which means it means it forces you. It forces you to be free. I don't even have to focus on freedom. I just have to focus on knowing the truth. Once I know the truth, it'll make me free. All right. You don't have to focus on on making something wet if you're pouring water on it. Just get water on it. It'll get wet. Don't worry about the wet part. The wet comes with the water. So knowing the truth brings the freedom. Knowing the truth brings about a different dimension of intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ, which automatically brings about truth. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. 
Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So, knowing the truth brings the freedom. Knowing the truth brings about a different dimension of intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ, which automatically brings about truth. So I want to talk about today, since we're looking at that, and I'm trying to explain that to you because so many times we don't get the results that we're looking for from the Word of God. And, it, and instead of understanding that it's impossible for God to lie, the Word works if we work it properly. It's like denying the existence of electricity. And we say, well, it, it, I didn't feel nothing. Nothing came on. Must not. Electricity doesn't work. No, you don't do that. You don't say electricity doesn't work. You check everything because we know electricity works. Well, God, in his sovereignty, he works. He works. But so many times, because we have misinterpreted or misunderstood or misquoted or left out a word here or a word there, we didn't receive the results. And so many times when we don't get results, we're so quickly to say it doesn't work. And that is one of the ways, one of the many ways that Satan will deceive us. So when the Lord says, know the truth, it'll make you free. Just know, just get to know the truth. Don't worry about freedom. It comes automatically. I want to study today uh, about something that we see in the life of Peter dealing with truth and that leads me to St. John 18:38, where Pilate is having a dialogue with Jesus Christ and Jesus is talking to Pilate about truth Pilate says this in St. John 18:38. Pilate said unto Jesus what is truth just think about that and when you look at that you, you might think he's being cynical you might think he's been uh, sarcastic, but that is a powerful statement. What is truth? Because if you don't know what truth is, then you can never know it. You can never be made free. So one of the elementary steps in understanding how knowing the truth make you free is knowing what truth is. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some things that when you read the Bible, you will concur with me. But... It is, it is not humanly possible to know truth on our own. We need divine intervention. I'm going to say that again. We need divine intervention really to know truth. Now, we can get to know facts, uh, but facts and truth is something different. See, facts are something that is based on human reasoning and, and so forth. Truth is based on faith. Facts is based on human logic. Truth is based on what God declares and what God says. And there's a difference. There's an, there's an incredible difference. And I want to show you this in the life of Peter. And also on tomorrow, I want to show it to you in the life of Elijah. So we'll be able to understand and we'll be able to say, well, we need to ask the question that Pilate asked. What is truth? Because I need to know what truth is before, f first before I can know it. What is truth? Because I gotta, I gotta get truth so I can know it. I gotta make sure it's not a, it's not just a fact, but it is the truth. So, so he says, what is truth? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-six, I want to use two excerpts from Matthew chapter twenty-six. I want to use the first response that. Peter has to Jesus when Jesus tells him that he's going to deny him then I want to look at when Peter actually denies the Lord Jesus Christ which is which is later on uh, in 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 his life I say in his life it, it is a few hours 
or days afterward that he actually denies the Lord. Now, here it is in, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 33. It says, Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Though all men should be offended because of you, yet I will never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that this night before the rooster crows, thou shalt deny me three times. Peter said unto Jesus, I, though I should die with you, yet I will not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the disciples. So here's Peter making an incredible statement. He says, I will never deny you. Now listen, you have to understand the difference between the truth, a lie, and falsehood or something that is incorrect. Peter in the text is not telling a lie. Peter in the text is telling what he perceived to be the truth. He perceives it to be the truth. He's not sitting there talking to Jesus, knowing that Jesus knows all things and lying to him. But the one thing that he doesn't do is actually listen to the Lord. He get caught up with his own uh, emotions, his, his own, if you will, uh, thinking. Because as good as the Lord had been to Peter, and, and Peter said, I will lay down my life for you. I will never deny you. But Jesus says something, and that's why words, and that's why we study words, because words are so important. Jesus says something in verse 34 to Peter. It says, Jesus said unto him, verily, not that word verily. And that's why I love using the King James Version, because when you look at that word verily, it actually means amen. It's not really a, a translation, it's a transliteration. It actually means amen, 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 it is so. Jesus is saying to him, let me tell you the truth. Peter states his truth, what he perceives to be true. Jesus states his perception of truth, all right? Now notice this. Truth is based on God's perception of truth. And that is because God's perception is already always right. Because he sees every angle from every direction. He sees it in the present, in the past, in the future. He sees it through the lens of omniscience, all-knowing. So Jesus says, yes, you are going to. Jesus says to Peter, you said you're not going. Peter says, I will never do it. Jesus says, yes, you're going to deny me tonight, this night. Ah, see, now, 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 that's pretty powerful. You're going to deny me in a few hours. You say you'll never do it. Peter comes back and he says this, though I should die with you, I will not deny you. Now, let's just look at that for a minute. Peter tried to fight with Jesus. You remember the story? He pulls the sword. He cuts off the ear of the high priest, servant. He's trying to defend him. He's there fighting with him. He's trying to do that. But, but the Lord says, put up your sword. Put up your sword. Can, can, you, can you follow me the way I am obeying, I am commanding you to follow me and you not deny me? See, see we, want it, we want it on our terms. Peter wanted with, with, with weapons. And the Lord says, no, if I take your weapon, if I strip you down, you, you're going to deny me. Peter said it'll never happen. The Bible says later on in that same chapter, it says to us later on that night that in verse 74, it says, Peter began to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus when said unto him before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now, let me tell you, Peter is weeping because he can't believe what he just did. Now, the reason why this is so important, because only truth make you free. Not your perception of truth, but truth. Now, because you can perceive truth and it can be a falsehood. It's not a lie. We've got to be real careful with that. A lie is something that is told to deceive. Peter's not saying this to deceive anybody. He actually believes this. He's not lying to the Lord. 
it's a falsehood though it's not the truth so he sees now that there are truths about himself that he didn't even know and brothers and sisters i'm telling you if you embrace that statement if we embrace the statement that there are things that satan has told us about ourselves that we believe is actually a lie it is not the truth it is deception but if we believe it about ourselves then the bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he i want you to stay with me and i want you to make sure that you go back and listen to all the messages in july because i believe that we are approaching a dimension of truth you say well well I, I got truth brothers and sisters because the lord jesus christ the omnipotent god because he's infinite you can continue to find a deeper dimension of truth and every time you walk into another dimension of truth more freedom comes and more freedom comes so i want you to stay with us i want you to i want you to follow us through this because i believe we're getting ready to shift to another dimension of truth. And if we do that, another dimension of knowing the truth, when we do that, then we're going to experience freedom in another dimension. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're gonna to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Hi, I'm Lady Jackie Stewart with the Axe Ministries, and we want to invite each and every one of you to join us this Sunday at 4 p.m. for our Words to Empower broadcast right here on this station. You can join us and hear a power-packed word from God as the anointing power of God fills this place and the word of God comes forth in spirit and in truth. We want you to join us as we talk about not just correction, but God loves us so much. He's a good, good father and he doesn't want us to just settle for anything. So you don't want to miss this powerful word from God as he, we explore how he talks to us and tells us don't settle for just anything.